Hello, everybody! My name is Provis, and welcome back to more Democracy 4 in the USA! Going into year three, and so far we've been able to do so without having any long and rambling Provis rants. It's amazing. It's almost as if I'm trying to keep myself under control. Factory farming law campaign for the tightening of animal welfare standards. This is actually a problem in that it will likely pit liberals against uh, and environmentalists against farmers. Eh, liberals might not care. I'm not too sure. Uh, if we leave it unchanged, we are going to be able to keep food prices low and make farmers happy, which is important. Um, tougher standards, it will be more expensive food, so food prices goes up, which is good for reducing obesity, but bad in that it increases poverty. That's one issue. I think we're going to leave it unchanged. Farmers like it, environmentalists and liberals do not like it, capitalists like it a little bit. Overall, I'd say that this is a net gain for me. So I'm kind of okay with how that has worked out. Still looking pretty good for our budget surplus, and right now we're looking at 86% in the polls. Like, we are smashing it right now. But we're not without our own issues, so we got an advisor who's on her way out here if we cannot find ways to make parents a bit happier. And that's obviously going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, motorists are also a huge issue, but gridlock needs to go away, which it looks like is actually about to happen. So that's going to be huge for me. We're talking a sudden boost of like 60% in motorist opinion. So this advisor is no longer going to be quite as upset. That's huge. So it really does come down a lot to parents. And for parents to be happy, we have to get rid of things like the doctor's strike. The problem is I don't really see a great way of dealing with the doctor's strike right now. I mean, I guess we could go harder on the, um, the pro-employer laws, but that doesn't really do things well for me. Like, I don't want to increase the working week. Honestly, if anything, I'd like to start balancing this out a little bit more, but... Yeah, um, hmm. Because I want wages to go up and stuff. That That is ultimately good, but a better economy kind of, you know, helps with that too. Rising tide and all that. Um, I mean, we could try to raise up, you know, like our school buses, but that just makes parents only a tiny bit happier. Doesn't do me a whole lot of good. Is there a new policy? See, one of the reasons I like new policies a lot is that, um... They are pretty good in that you can pass them, and it's a one-time cost politically capitalized. You can have it anywhere on the slider. Whereas once it is an established policy, changing it is tough. You want to start kind of at the level you want. So you get a lot more impact from new policies as opposed to gradually raising other ones. Uh, this is good. Childcare provisions. It upsets capitalists, and that's a problem, yes. However, it's good in a lot of other factors, and this would be huge for parents. We don't even have to do a very big one. We can do minimal spending. And we're still looking at a pretty good bonus for our parents here. Like, mid-road and half. Like, we're talking, you know, a teensy fraction of the cost. And just benefits. Now, capitalists be upset, yes. Productivity going up is good. And the reason that childcare provisioning is supposed to improve productivity is the idea is instead of having stay-at-home parents, like usually predominantly women, right, uh, and have them instead working in the workforce, you have an overall better, more productive society. And that's the social democratic argument for why the government should be providing for uh, uh, child care, because it's kind of in a, a national interest perspective. The GDP rises if all women get out there, right? That's kind of the idea behind it. Of course, there are other downsides that aren't considered from that pragmatic perspective. You really have to take into account how well uh, parent, uh, children are raised if they have a parent around consistently, or if they are a latchkey kid, right? You know, you can see studies on that kind of stuff too, and it's I think it's a little bit questionable as to what would happen on a national level. The point is, though, with this, we can enjoy some really good benefits. The only major issue I have with this is we're looking at an increase in socialist membership. Now, I think I can still overcome this easily enough. But for only $5 billion, this is one way of making the parents happier, and it's kind of good for me in a lot of ways. So I think this is worth doing as mostly a token effort. Also, once you've, like, pressed the button, like, it's done. You, you can't go back. It's gonna happen. We're gonna go ahead and do the uh, business startup campaign, by the way. And it turns out, when you have people empowered to kind of make their own decisions about their own jobs and start up their own businesses, they're less inclined to believe in this whole socialist thing about, uh, you know, to each according to their need and from each according to their ability thing. I think they got that backwards, but you get the point. So, uh, turns out, yeah, if they own their own business, they don't want to be socialists. <laughs> I find that funny. Um, okay, yeah, this would be good for me in terms of actually getting some demographics I really care about and completely offsetting the damage we're doing for socialist membership uh, as of the last video. So, yeah, that's great. Nothing else we can change here. By the way, if you were wondering, the red versus green bars up here, um, green shows uh, where you can make a change. If you have enough political capital, you'll see green, and if it's full, it means you can make changes anywhere in the spectrum. If it's only partial, it means you only have enough political capital to make small incremental changes. That's an interesting little feature. I mean, the UI of Democracy 4 is looking, I think, pretty promising uh, so far. I'm very happy with that. See, oh wow, okay, that's a problem. The GDP has just gone down significantly thanks to a flash crash. 
Automated trading has rendered the stock market so fragile that a single large trade sent stocks into a sudden spiral. Okay, automated trading is apparently a problem. 30% drop. Ow! Oh, God, that's bad. But Crystal Rivera is very upset. She wants a clean fuel subsidy. Things for, you know, motorists. But gridlock just went away. So, I mean, that's great. By the way, crime is non-existent. Did you know that? That's pretty cool. Obesity is down. Notice, by the way, our health has improved a lot. And not by actually changing any of our healthcare system. We have not gone for state healthcare. We have not gone for vouchers. We haven't done anything except for focus on wellness programs. That's kind of cool. So, cyberbullying apparently is starting to go up a little bit. I don't know what happens if you get cyberbullying. It doesn't seem to show you... Um, exactly what uh, the effects are, only that it is potentially bad. So that's that's scary. Demands from a donor. One of your major party donors is insisting you placate them by implementing a Labor Day bank holiday. They'll abandon their financial support. I don't accept. Donor can abandon me. I don't care. I'm not doing that. I know what happens with the Labor Day bank holiday. You take like a 5% GDP drop for one day out of the year. It's terrible. Hey, look, motorists are all of a sudden a lot happier. So your loyalty should go up. I think. You are still not doing great. Your loyalty, I think, should be ticking up a little bit. Parents are getting slightly happier. Uh, if we were to do things like perhaps ban some more drugs, that tends to make parents a little bit happier. However, it also reduces liberalism. I mean, if we went, like, crazy on drugs, we'd get a load of liberals. Which I think, by the way, is a little bit of a uh, unfair characterization of what liberalism actually is in this case, but that's fine. Uh, what happens if we, like, ex restrict trade unions a lot? I'm curious about this. Like, what happens if I did that? Law and order? Uh, no, it's not an option down here. Hang on. Where? One of these has to do with banning unions, or at least greatly restricting it. Yeah, and here's the Labor Day bank holiday, by the way. It makes socialists happier, but the GDP definitely goes down. I know that's a fact. I've done it before. Um... Workers on boards, no, 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 no. Diversity quotas, government subsidies for unions, no. CEO pay, trade union restrictions, that's the one. It takes so much political capital to uh, introduce this, though. Like, it's just not a great deal for me. Um, we could go for the vertical farm subsidies, which, by the way, is good in a lot of ways. It reduces the issues we would have with potential water shortages due to, um, due to uh, environmental issues. Also reduces traffic congestion, kind of frees up a lot of land. We just start building farms on top of skyscrapers. We're talking like uh, city skylines, green cities, and all that, you know? That's a thing. Uh, organic farming subsidies. This is a good way of reducing obesity with uh, healthier food, making the farmers happy. Oh, gosh, I'm not sure what I want to do along here, honestly. Um, frequent flyer tax? Ugh. Hybrid cars initiative. Now, this would be interesting. It's not as expensive as you'd think, but it's a subsidy that actually encourages a lot more people to get into electric cars, which is great for the environment. Like, this is good across the board, and reducing our oil demand is good for us. And the environment goes up by a lot, for only one billion dollars. In this case, it's a very effective policy, and I might as well get that ball a-rolling. Fuel efficiency standards are also good for the economy, and they're very cheap. The only downside is they really can upset, uh, motorists. Is that true? Wait, no. Oil demand goes down. Capitalists are unhappy. I can afford to do this a little bit. Maybe a lot. Capitalists aren't that upset. CO2 emissions drop a lot. Environmentalists are happy. Car usage going up is an issue, though. But still, I think this is okay. We'll try for that. I have two political capital left. Um, we can go for the cyberbullying awareness. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. It doesn't show you that it's reducing cyberbullying potential. But given that we got a warning that it's potentially going to be an issue, let's just go ahead and preempt it so it's never going to fire. Okay? That's going to be the new goal. Let's move on to the next turn. Corporate manslaughter bill. By the way, the GDP apparently has bounced back hard. Nice. Oh, we got a deficit. Well, that'll fix itself next turn, I think. Corporate manslaughter. A new bill has been proposed that will allow uh, corporate entities to be prosecuted for manslaughter when they've been found guilty of negligence resulting in loss of life. Now, this is an interesting topic. So this law is necessary to deter companies from cutting corners when it comes to the safety of their employees and members of the public. Too many people die every year in industrial accidents. No lessons learned. This law will be a step forward for corporate responsibility, or this law is unenforceable. With large companies employing many subcontractors, the legal complexities involved in applying blame for accidents are considerable. This law may be well-intentioned, but in practice will be an expensive waste of time that serves to line the pockets of lawyers whilst failing to achieve any real change. Hmm. So a lot of this kind of comes down to the philosophy of whether or not a uh, corporation is, in fact, an entity that has, you know, like, rights. Um, 
or whether it is uh, an organization and a package that can be regulated heavily. Um, I think in this case, blocking the law is better for me as far as making capitalists happy. I don't know who this impacts. It is undoubtedly trade unionists. Beyond that, I don't know. Let's do this, because I think it works for me. Liberals don't like it. Trade unionists, I knew were not going to be happy, but that's okay. Unemployment is going down. Okay, this is fine. Um, all this is not bad. We have a pretty good... Oh my gosh, almost a third of the country are members of our party? Holy crap, 94% of the vote is amazing. All right, hang on. Tonight news. I have no idea why the government does this. The words of Sarah Morgan when describing the daily suffering of her elderly mother in acute and constant pain from an incurable position. The government still opposes a right to die, and they look in my mother's eyes and see the suffering they are causing. It's unbearable. Uh, interesting. So we can actually see a policy here, and this is a new policy. The right to die, so to speak, uh, does cost a fair bit of political capital. Really upsets the religious and the conservatives. Population goes down. <laughs> oh my god. Healthcare demand goes down. Yep, if you really want to deal with your healthcare demand, I suppose this is one way of doing it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh gosh. Okay. Hey, this is funny. Mitt Romney is the guy who said corporations are people. No, Governor Romney. Corporations are not people. We just talked about this. Thank you, Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> anyway, alrighty. Um, okay, so let's see. So the doctor's crisis is actually getting worse, not better. Um, I think the biggest thing is I really need... Well, let me think. Hang on. So we actually just saw something about wages here. What's going on with wages? So wages going up, I would think... Let's see. Doctor Strike. It's acting as... this in... Wages going up increases the doc doctor strike? Is this correct, or are wages too low? Like, I don't know what the, the reference as far as, like, how it was uh, in comparison before it went up. Wages going up resulting in a strike wouldn't make any sense to me at all. Um, hospital overcrowding is still going down. I mean, our only real solution here is going to end up being some sort of private health care. I wonder if there's another way of reducing the overcrowding. No, not really. Um, maybe there's a policy, though. Public services? Mm, not really, no. Um, ugh. This is, this is this is a rough call here because I ugh, I don't have a great way of improving our capacity with what we've got right now, honestly. Except for a sweeping overhaul in our healthcare, and I mean sweeping. Um, hmm. We could do the small business grants, by the way. This would be pretty good for making our capitalists happy. Uh, Self-employed goes down. Trade union goes down. This is good for me in a lot of ways. It doesn't have to be outrageously expensive for me. But if we did like an extra $10 billion toward it or something like that, this this would be pretty good. Reduce socialist membership a lot. I mean, let's see. GDP gain, 2%. I mean, yeah, you can really ramp up the GDP. The problem is a high GDP is really good. But at the same time, at some point, a high GDP without the right safeguards in place leads to a lot of new issues. So, I mean, I don't know. We've already clicked the button, so we're doing this. Um, but that's a thing. Let's see. Pollution has dropped precipitously, and I think that's partly because of the improvements we've made here to the environment. Because everyone's switching over to electric cars. That's awesome. Also, the GDP tanked for a brief moment, so we got kind of a little hiccup effect. Um, the uncompetitive economy I would love to get rid of. Gig economy, though. I mean, as tech goes up, that's going to be continuing a thing. I really don't think we need to get rid of that. Environmental protests, I'm not going to worry about right now. Um, fake news. You know something we could really use are some more uh, emphasis in um, education systems? That would honestly be pretty darn good for me. Youth politics doesn't do me a lot of good. What is reforestation? Respiratory disease, unemployment, pollution, COT. All of this seems great. Wait, this is amazing. This is a new policy. I've never seen this one before. Let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. Wow! It just directly impacts, like, a lot of stuff I don't like. This is awesome! Oh, dude, let's do this. We're gonna get rid of the pollution issue. It's gonna be a few billion bucks, but I, I, I think that's gonna end up being A-OK. -okay. Let's, let's give that one a go. I'm out of political capital already, by the way. Like, we're, we're just... We're struggling a little bit on the political capital front. And Stephanie Clark is once again suggesting she wants to leave because the parents just aren't happy enough. She wants maternity leave. Well, I mean, we can look at that. Um, maternity leave reduces productivity a lot, but it does impact a lot of things in a good way. It does also create a corporate exodus because uh, companies are leaving because they have forced rules, um, which make it more costly for them to do business. So that's not great. 
Pollution is gone. That's awesome. Torture deportation. Police officers have arrested a con man who is staying in our country illegally. Under normal circumstances, he would be eligible to be deported back to his country of origin. The man claims that if he is sent back to his homeland, it is likely he will be tortured by the government. Um, we're going to keep him here. This will upset the patriots a lot and make the liberals happier. Oh well. 98% of the vote, by the way, and 144 million members of our party is outstanding. Um, motorists are looking okay. I think, I think this whole par parent thing is a real problem. I'm surprised how much the Patriots like me, given, you know, what we've been doing lately. They, they should not be as thrilled with me as they are. So, yeah, you are a consistent thorn in my side. Um, and so, frankly, is Crystal Rivera. Her loyalty should be going up a lot, though, over time, thanks to the motorists. So that's a thing. We can afford to make... Okay. Let me think about this. We really need to be shoring up our political power gain, because it is, it is messing with a lot of things. What can we do as far as policies that are going to make, let's say, ethnic minorities happier? Border Controls, Foreign Aid, Racial Description, Discrimination Act. We can ramp this up a little bit more, which is good, and it doesn't cost me much. Uh, does this seriously cost... Oh, it costs one political power to upgrade. That is completely fine. We will do this. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, citizenship Tests. So, I'm surprised. I thought it used to be. I could be wrong on this. Yeah, higher citizenship tests have a higher standard as far as who we allow to become a citizen, and therefore, it reduces racial tension by having uh, a little bit more cultural hom uh, homogeneity um, when people are first entering into the country. So that's good. Uh, it upsets um, ethnic minorities and liberals and reduces immigration. So that's not great. What's our immigration look like, by the way? Pretty good. If the GDP goes too high, it's going to become a problem, though. Border controls. I mean, this upsets ethnic minorities quite a bit as well, so we don't necessarily want to be doing that. What else can we do? Foreign aid. Foreign aid is usually pretty good. It's expensive, but it goes a long way to making foreign relations go up, which is great. Also improves relations with uh, ethnic minorities. It upsets patriots, but that's not a big deal. We can spend only two political capital in order to gain um, a fair bit of improvement here, and higher foreign relations... I think is good. Uh, it reduces the likelihood of some nasty events such as cyber warfare, etc., etc. Right? So that's that's genuinely a good thing. Fake news. Fake news. I mean, what's internet speed? That's a new thing we haven't looked at. It's only impacted by technology. That's it? Okay, if you say so. Technology's great, but it has a lot of nasty impacts, too. Gotta be somewhat careful about that. Uncompetitive economy. We were so close to getting rid of this before. If I can just get productivity up a bit more, we'd be in a good spot. Alternatively, we just look for ways to make other people happy. Um, what's this right to privacy? Makes liberals happy, reduces the GDP. How much? I don't know. Body cameras? Make liberals happy, upset a lot of other folks, reduces corruption and racial tension. This works for me. Um, this is good in every way as far as what I want to do. Where are the liberals? There they are. They're not as happy with me as they kind of need to be. Um, I kind of like that. Welfare fraud. The thing is, like, I, I know that I need to deal with parents. It's just that... Ugh. If we could get rid of any of this stuff, that would solve the problem. What's, um, what's the environment looking like now, by the way? Where is the environment? Environmental protests, environment. Oh, yeah, okay, so there's the hiccup I was talking about. It was just enough to get rid of pollution, but it likely is going to come right back. We're going to get the pollution event again because the GDP came back. There's always a weird delayed effect. Um, gosh, dang, this, though. We have a huge surplus. You know what? It is time to go for healthcare vouchers. We're doing it. All right, private healthcare goes up a lot. Now, I'm not looking to have an absurdly large... Um, healthcare system here. We're doing just a little bit. But we're looking at bumping up the uh, private healthcare system by another 12.5% in two uh, turns, two quarters. Socialism membership goes down. Now, if we did a lot of this, we could improve quality and we could do, like, a ton. I might ramp this up in the future. If I start here, by the way, it costs me less to change in the future. I'm okay with this. I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to spend too much, but we're going to spend our entire surplus just trying to get healthcare situated, and we're going to do so in a capitalistic way. 
All right, healthcare vouchers, that is a thing now. We are going to be sending out vouchers. You can go and buy your own healthcare and insurance. It's pseudo, pseudo government healthcare, but it's entirely driven by the free market still. Now, of course, we do have to worry about the market, you know, trying to raise prices to capture all that money. We're not trying to do price controls, but still, I think that could be good. If we can just solve the doctor strike, we're going to be in a much, much, much better position. Also, also, the increase in private health care will help to reduce the hospital overcrowding because there will be better funding going around. So that's a thing. And reforestation is actually going to get rid of respiratory disease over time, but we need a big drop here. I mean, yeah, we're going to have to start focusing on spending some of our money on the economy, but not until the economy gets maxed out. I need a lot more here. We may actually have to consider passing a new tax at some point in the next few turns, but that's okay. Now, if we do not get this solved with Stephanie Clark... And with Crystal Rivera, we're going to fire them because I need to start getting more political power. I've, I've held out hope that you guys are going to get back on track. Um, I'm trying really hard to make you happy. But you know what? Since you're going to be a pain in my butt, you know, if you don't get your act together soon, I'm just going to get rid of you. And uh, I'm not going to worry about you anymore because I need political capital if we're going to deal with this. By the way, we're never going to get rid of the debt in the USA. It's just too high. It is too high. I don't think there's any way we're going to be able to get enough of a surplus to pull this one off. But okay. So anything else? I mean, we're out of uh, political power for this turn. So there's nothing else I can do except apparently change things like alcohol awareness campaigns, uh, healthy eating, basically just campaigns in general. Keep the country tidy. Social justice. Uh, what about, yeah, compulsory foreign language? I'm just checking to see if there's anything else I care about. We could change our junk food tax, actually, and increase this. It will get me, like, no extra money, but it does improve health a tiny bit. All right, let's just go ahead and do it. We'll get a little bit of extra income out of this one. That's fine. Um, and yeah, that's literally it. Okay, so we're going to end this video here. Uh, next year is election year, so that's fun. Um, at the moment, I'm looking pretty darn good. <laughs> My popularity is through the roof, even though some demographics aren't quite as thrilled with me as I need them to be. Um, if we can just get our cabinet in order, I think we'll be able to enact a lot of great changes and fix up the country. So stick around for the next video, and we'll see how we do. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.